Alright guys, so you've just gotten an i9-12900K and it comes with this very good looking box and you're wondering, can I get more performance out of it? Well, yes you can. So, welcome to the overclocking guide, complete overclocking guide for the 12900K. It works for the 12900KF and the KS as well. And, well, it's gonna increase your performance and we have two different profiles. One for productivity and one for gaming. Let's get straight into it. Okay, so here we are into the BIOS. Now here we are using a Z690 Gigabyte Gaming X, as you can see right there. And we're using an i9 12900K. Now, before we actually get into the actual overclocking, the settings, all the profiles and stuff, let me say something. Now, with this CPU, okay, it's not as easy as with other CPUs because it draws a lot of power. So you do need a very good cooling system. Now. What we're using here is the deep cool 360mm all-in-one cooler. I have actually the whole video about the build on my channel in case you want to see it specifically. But basically, with a good 360mm all-in-one cooler, you will be good. But overclocking this thing actually really increases the VRM's temperature, even if you have a very good motherboard. So you need a case with a good airflow and a good motherboard, okay? This is on the medium to low end in terms of motherboards. We will make it work. So let's get directly into it. We will have two different profiles, one for gaming, one for productivity, and that is simply because uh, for productivity, we are enabling the actual uh, efficiency core. Now, this CPU, I'm sure you know it since you have it, but it has 16 cores, 24 threads, eight cores are performance core, eight cores are efficiency cores. Now, the efficiency cores, they're useless for gaming. So we can do some interesting things uh, with the settings if we're just gaming. So. If you are gaming and streaming or gaming and doing productivity work at the same time, you will need the first profile. Now I will give you a, a bit of tips, but then as in every overclocking guide, you will need to test it out for yourself. So you will need uh, two softwares to test it. One is Prime 95 small FFT, you will use that one. And the one is hardware monitor, basically you test if your overclock is stable, but let's get straight into it. So you come into the BIOS, the first thing you wanna do as in every overclocking, uh, video is to unlock all the true boost performance. Now you will find something that's called enhanced multi-core performance or depending on the motherboard again the settings might be a bit different on Asus boards and stuff but basically you want to find all the power limits and set them to the absolute maximum so like long duration power limit just hit 99999 unlock it all the way short duration same just unlock everything okay first step then we will need to actually set the multipliers. Now, 50 on performance CPU clock ratio. On it, in some BIOS, it's gonna be P, P clock ratio, okay? You are set it to 50, then this is just the baseline, okay? Then I will tell you how to increase it. Now, efficiency clock ratio, set this to 40. Now, the performance clock ratio out of the box under AVX load, um, depending on the motherboard, it's anywhere from 4.4 to 4.5 gigahertz. It's not actually the 5.2 gigahertz they advertise. So this is giving you around a 10% increase. The actual efficiency CPU clock ratio is 3.6 out of the box. So this is a flat 10% increase. And now the ring ratio, which depending on the motherboard might be called cache ratio, you want to set this to 40 as well, okay? So this is our starting line, okay? Now, I will tell you um, how these can be increased. The CPU clock ratio can go all the way up to 52, if you're really lucky. Uh, the efficiency CPU clock ratio, leave it at 40, okay? Don't go higher, it's pretty much useless. And the ring ratio, you can go up to 41 or even 42 uh, on both of these right here, um, if you have um, some very high speed RAM and you want to get a bit more out of it. After doing that, again, enable the XMP, set your DRAM frequency. Uh, here we're using some DDR5, um, Metacram, Shadow RGB. And now you want to go under vCore voltage mode. Now, depending on if, if you've watched other guides, well, that, that, that was a mistake, you should have watched mine, but um, they, will, they might mention the VCC IN voltage. Now you do not need to change this. Uh, for water overclocks. You will need to change this just if you're going uh, for benchmarks uh, with uh, probably chilled chilled water with a custom water loop. You don't need this for regular overclocking. So the only voltage you need to change is the V-core, okay? But it's not actually the V-core, okay? 
Now, let me explain to you quickly how it works. So the vCore, you set it, this is not the number that you're getting. So in here we are setting 1.35, okay? But you are not getting 1.35, okay? You are actually getting this voltage diminished by the load line calibration in your motherboard. So what you will need to do is, is to find a stable pairing of vCore and load line calibration. Now, if that sounds difficult, uh, it's no problem. I will show you quickly. So here for this overclock at 5 gigahertz with 4 gigahertz efficiency core, 4 gigahertz cache, we need around 1.28 voltage under load. To get that, the best way to preserve the life of our chip is to set it to 1.35 on the BIOS and then to set a medium sized load line calibration. Now, let's go into the load line calibration settings so I can just show you um, how to set it. So set 1.35 on the, on the vCore, then go under CPU VRM settings and look for load line calibration. Now, every motherboard will have this graph right here, okay? Now, what this thing is, is it shows you how the voltage is adjusted, okay? Now, the line, the flat line, is the voltage you input, okay? So the motherboard, to preserve the life of your chip and of the motherboard, uh, automatically drops the voltage under load. So the voltage is at 1.35 when it's idle, and then it drops um, as much as you want to uh, under load. Now, if you leave it at stock, it will drop all the way down because this is the best for the life of your chip, but this hinders performance. So what you wanna do, depending, like regardless of the motherboard, is to set the middle one, okay? so. Here we have seven, so you want to set level four, which is the middle. Now on Gigabyte motherboard, it's not called level four. Okay, it's called high. Okay, now if I change it to medium, you can see that the yellow line goes lower. If I change it to normal, it goes the lowest. Okay, so we want it to high. And this on Gigabyte motherboard is going to give us around a 0 0.07 volt drops under load. If you have an ASUS motherboard, this is gonna be level four, uh, just saying. But anyways, once we've done that, we set our vCore at 1.35, we set our load line calibration to the middle, and the overclock is basically done. But if you do this, okay, this is what most YouTubers will tell you. They will tell you, yeah, just do this, and then you load up a benchmark and it crashes. That's because, they do not consider um, high stress scenarios. Now, to do that, we need to use an actual AVX offset, okay? Now, this is a controversial one, okay? Because now we'll tell you specifically, let me find it. So under AVX settings, you set user defined, then you set uh, AVX offset two, okay? If you wanna just copy it, you just copy it um, and it's gonna stabilize your CPU. Now, what happens is the following. Now. Um, if you hit this, your PC will be stable. Um, it will run in games at 5 GHz, but it will also run in productivity at 5 GHz. But if you get a workload that uses AVX heavily, uh, AVX is a set of instructions that uses the CPU um, in a very specific way. They have built it into the processor, okay? And it generates a lot of heat. Now, if you do not uh, put this offset, you will need much more voltage to get your CPU stable, okay? So, by putting this, when you are under AVX load, the CPU uh, drops to 4.8 gigahertz instead of 5, and this allows you to have it stable with lower voltage, but it lowers the frequency under AVX, and so it reduces the temperature under AVX, so it doesn't crash under AVX load. So, do this, but again, if you wanna, you can just leave it to zero, and you can up the voltage until you find it stable or maybe you have a very good chip and you don't need to but so this is the baseline now how can you increase i've already told you now let's talk a bit about the vcore um, on this architecture um, you really don't want to go anywhere higher than 1.45 1.45 in the bios with this kind of load line calibration it will mean around 1.38 actual voltage don't don't go higher than that okay it's gonna very quickly degrade your chip we do not want chip degradation okay so just um i recommend just leaving it at 1.35 but 
probably most of you will be temperature limited anyways so you probably will not have the problem uh, because you will not be able to go higher because you will go uh, automatically to uh, 100 degrees so we have concluded the tutorial for the productivity settings now let's get into the gaming settings this is much more interesting i think i think most of you will be gaming so let's get into it now what you want to do is basically disable the efficiency cores okay now it might seem odd but by disabling the efficiency cores okay you actually increase the efficiency because by doing that you have less cores so less heat so more efficient now as you can see number of e cores enabled set it to zero okay and now by doing this we can do the following okay get ready because this is what people don't tell you get ready okay so this one we don't need it okay so we just set it to auto okay because there are no efficiency cores the ring ratio we set this to 4.7 <laughs> okay so yes we can up the cache by 20 percent and have it still stable with the same voltage just because we disable the efficiency cores so this is how this architecture works pretty amazing but now if you've seen a bit on the industry what they have done like what amd has done with the ryzen 7 5800x 3d is they took a normal cpu they slapped more cache into it and now magically it does like 30 percent more performance in games right because some games are very 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 cache intensive or ring intensive okay especially if you have high frequency ram so by giving 20 percent more on the cache <laughs> in some games i have seen huge gains i have seen as high as 15 percent more fps on a 1200k just by doing this so this is the trick the ultimate trick for more performance now this is the setting i recommend for gaming okay just 50 performance cpu clock ratio 47 on the ring okay 1.35 volt with high load line calibration which means level 4 which means 1.28 volt effective under load and then um, an avx offset of true okay so just keep that offset just to be sure um, if your PC crashes, by the way, you will need to increase this to free, okay? Because it's AVX is really intensive. Now, after doing this, how can you go higher in case you want to go higher because you have an extraordinarily good CPU or you have an extraordinarily uh, good cooling system? Well, especially for the gaming profile, you can go as high as 5.3, okay? So if you are willing to push the voltage a bit and you're lucky with your silicon you can go as high as 4.3 with 47 cash and you can play with this as well i haven't seen it go uh, really higher than 4.8 um, in a stable manner but you might be able to go as high as 50 if you're really really lucky okay i'm just telling you so for example those settings this okay 1.4 volt v core 50 on the ring 53 on the performance block ratio um if you have an extraordinarily good cooling system and you don't mind degrading your cpu a bit this is gonna be amazing performance but i think you have all the information now to go and tune your own cpu okay so if this was helpful guys just i mean drop a like drop a sub i have a ton of content about tuning stuff i have like some gpu overclocking guides gpu undervolting guides and even CPU under vaulting guys. So you might want to check them out. And I also do builds. I have the build for this specific computer on the channel. So check it out um, if you want to see how I tuned it personally. And see you in the next one, guys. Bye.